If you're a man in your 60s, 70s, or beyond, there's a question you may have never asked out loud. Is my private routine helping my prostate or hurting it? Tonight, we're trading internet myths for real medicine. I'm a physician, and in the next few minutes, I'll show you what daily masturbation actually does to your prostate, why large long-term studies point to potential benefits, not harm, and how to use this knowledge wisely at your age. If you're waking up two or three times a night, if your stream feels weak, or you're simply tired of mixed messages, you're in the right place. I'll walk you through the science, then give you practical steps you can start tonight to sleep better, protect your health, and talk confidently with your doctor about screening and treatment options. No scare tactics, no miracle tonics, just clear, respectful, evidence-based guidance for men who want to feel better and stay independent. By the end of this video, you'll understand the truth about ejaculation and prostate health, when to be reassured, when to check in with your clinician, and how small daily habits can add up to real relief. Your choices still matter at any age. Stay with me and let's put you back in control of your health, one smart step at a time. First things first, your prostate is a small gland about the size of a walnut sitting just below your bladder and in front of the rectum. Its job is to make much of the fluid that carries sperm. As we age, the prostate tends to grow. This is called benign prostatic hyperplasia, or BPH, and it can lead to common symptoms like a weak stream, frequent trips to the bathroom, especially at night, urgency, and that frustrating feeling of not quite emptying the bladder. These symptoms are common, not a personal failing, and they are highly manageable with the right strategies. Now to the question many men ask quietly, is daily masturbation harmful to the prostate? Short answer, no. Decades of moral warnings and internet myths have painted masturbation as risky, inflammatory, or even dangerous. Modern research tells a different story. Large, long-running studies have associated more frequent ejaculation, whether with a partner or by masturbation, with a lower risk of being diagnosed with prostate cancer. In other words, men who ejaculated more often tended to wind up with less prostate cancer over time. Let's unpack that carefully so it's honest and useful. One of the strongest pieces of evidence comes from a Harvard-led study that followed tens of thousands of men for nearly two decades. When researchers looked at how often men ejaculated and who went on to develop prostate cancer, they found that higher ejaculation frequency was associated with a lower risk of being diagnosed with the disease later on. The relationship was most notable for lower risk forms of prostate cancer. Importantly, this is an association, not proof that ejaculation itself is the sole cause of the lower risk. Lifestyle patterns often travel together. Men who are sexually active might also be more physically active or have different health behaviors. Still, the consistency of this finding across multiple studies lends weight to the idea that regular ejaculation is at least a positive piece of the prostate health puzzle. Why might this be? There are several biologically plausible explanations. One is often called the prostate stagnation hypothesis. The prostate contains tiny ducts. Ejaculation moves fluid through those ducts and may help flush out old secretions and cellular debris before they can build up and irritate tissue. Another idea centers on cellular housekeeping. Cells divide and renew throughout life, and the natural process of replacing older cells can go awry if damaged cells linger. Regular ejaculation may support a healthier rhythm of cellular turnover in the gland. A third concept involves stress and inflammation. Chronic stress can heighten inflammatory signals in the body, and sexual activity, for many men, reduces stress and supports relaxation. Less inflammation over the long term could be friendlier to prostate tissue. To be clear, these are plausible mechanisms supported by physiology, not proofs, but they fit what we observe in the research. So, what happens if you masturbate daily? For most men, including older adults, it's generally safe. It does not wear out your prostate. It does not cause prostate enlargement. It does not cause prostate cancer. In fact, a pattern of regular ejaculation has been linked to a lower future risk of prostate cancer diagnosis. If that fits your preferences, values, and comfort, you can consider it a normal, healthy part of life. There are a few sensible precautions. 
Use a comfortable, non-irritating lubricant, especially if your skin is dry or you're on medications that cause dryness. Avoid excessive friction to prevent chafing or micro tears. If you notice pain, blood in the urine or semen, fever, burning with urination, or new pelvic discomfort, pause and let your clinician know. Those symptoms may signal an infection, a kidney stone, or a flare of prostatitis that deserves evaluation. If you have significant heart disease and are unsure about sexual activity in general, ask yourself whether you can comfortably climb two flights of stairs. If that's difficult, have a conversation with your clinician about what level of sexual activity is safe for you. And if you use medications for chest pain called nitrates, do not combine them with erectile dysfunction medications. Your doctor can guide you on safer options. Because many of you are living with BPH or bothersome urinary symptoms, let me offer evidence-based steps you can try tonight alongside any plan you create with your clinician. Limit large fluid intake two to three hours before bedtime. If you have swelling in your legs during the day, try elevating your legs for an hour or wearing compression socks in the late afternoon. This can reduce nighttime urination by shifting fluid earlier. Cut back on caffeine and alcohol after mid-afternoon. Both can irritate the bladder and worsen urgency. Practice double voiding at bedtime. Urinate, wait a minute, and try again to empty more fully before you sleep. Keep a safe path to the bathroom with nightlights and sturdy footwear to prevent falls. These simple changes can meaningfully reduce nighttime trips and improve safety. Pelvic floor exercises can also help with dribbling and urgency, though the technique matters. A light contraction, lifting and squeezing the muscles you'd use to stop the flow of urine, held for a few seconds and repeated several times a day, can build control over weeks. If you're unsure you're doing them correctly, a referral to a pelvic floor physical therapist is often a game changer, even for men. And if your symptoms are persistent or severe, modern medications such as alpha blockers or 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, and in some cases minimally invasive procedures, can offer real relief. These choices are individualized, so partner with your clinician to weigh benefits and side effects based on your goals. Now let's step back to the bigger picture. Masturbation, even daily, can be part of a healthy, normal sex life at any age, but it is not a magic shield. Think of ejaculation frequency as one helpful factor in a broader evidence-based plan. The lifestyle foundations that support prostate and whole body health are as important in your 60s and 70s as they were earlier, and sometimes even more so. A heart-healthy Mediterranean-style eating pattern, rich in vegetables, fruits, beans, whole grains, nuts, and olive oil, with fish a couple of times a week, supports metabolic health and may be associated with better outcomes for a range of age-related conditions. Some observational research suggests that foods containing lycopene, like cooked tomatoes and watermelon, might be linked to a lower risk of prostate cancer, but this is not definitive. If you enjoy green tea, it's a reasonable choice for many people. Again, the evidence for prostate-specific benefit is mixed. The bottom line, Focus on a balanced, minimally processed diet you can sustain rather than chasing individual superfoods. Be cautious about supplements marketed as prostate cures. They often overpromise and underdeliver, and some interact with common medications. Physical activity is one of the most powerful tools you have. Aim for regular movement that matches your abilities. Brisk walking, water aerobics, a stationary bike, or dancing if you enjoy it. Add light strength training twice a week to preserve muscle and protect joints, and include balance work, tai chi, or simple heel-to-toe walking to reduce falls. Even 20 to 30 minutes most days adds up. Maintaining a healthy weight, especially avoiding a large waistline, is associated with lower risk of aggressive prostate cancer and improves urinary symptoms in many men. Sleep matters too. Poor sleep and untreated sleep apnea can worsen nighttime urination, blood pressure, and metabolic health. If you snore loudly, stop breathing at night, or wake unrefreshed, ask your clinician about screening for sleep apnea. Treating it can improve both sleep and urinary frequency. And as always, avoiding tobacco and keeping alcohol moderate supports better outcomes across the board. I want to address something you may see online. Slick ads for prostate cleanses, 
detox waters, or secret tonics that promise to unclog your prostate overnight. There's no reliable clinical evidence that these products cure urinary symptoms or prevent cancer. If something sounds too good to be true, it usually is. Your time and money are better spent on proven strategies, smart lifestyle changes, evidence-based medications when needed, and regular check-ins with your care team. That brings us to screening. For men between about 55 and 69, the decision to have a PSA blood test should be a shared, informed discussion with your clinician. The test can help detect prostate cancer earlier, but it can also lead to false alarms and treatment of cancers that might never have caused harm. For many men over 70, routine screening isn't recommended, but there are exceptions, particularly if you are very healthy with a life expectancy of more than 10 years or have higher risk due to family history or being black, which is associated with higher incidence and mortality. The right decision depends on your values and your health profile. If you choose to screen, your clinician can also discuss newer approaches to reduce unnecessary biopsies, such as repeating tests or using MRI when appropriate. Let's return to the original question and put it in plain language. If you masturbate daily and it feels comfortable, that habit is generally safe and normal at your age. It does not damage your prostate. In large, well-conducted studies, higher ejaculation frequency has been associated with a lower likelihood of being diagnosed with prostate cancer later. That's encouraging. It doesn't mean you must ejaculate daily to be healthy, nor does it mean you're doing something wrong if you prefer less frequent sexual activity or none at all. Your health is the sum of many choices. Keep your lifestyle steady, attend your preventive visits, manage your medications wisely, and reach out if symptoms change. You deserve clear, respectful, evidence-based guidance. If you're dealing with bothersome urinary symptoms, don't suffer in silence. A short conversation with your clinician can open the door to treatments that genuinely improve quality of life. And if you have questions you'd like me to unpack in future videos, myths you've heard about men's health, aging, sexual function, or cancer prevention, leave them in the comments. I read them and I'll bring you the best evidence we have. Take good care of yourself. Stay curious, stay active, and I'll see you next time.